Has any one of you ever heard a song on the radio that out of nowhere gave you goosebumps? A song you've heard for the first time and stuck with you immediately. I bet many of us have had this kind of experience. If you have, please raise your hand. Oh, I'm not alone. <laughs> I've had these two. I bet that most of us can recall the exact place and time you were when you heard that song. Maybe there was something going on in your life, which can be a good thing, a happy moment, a sad moment, for example. Maybe it were the words, the melody, the voice that made you feel just that song. Some of us have put a line from the song on a wedding card invitation, hopefully once. The thing is, you heard the song, and it brought something to you. It made you feel, it gave you comfort, or hope, or energy, and it made you feel inspired. At the age of 15, I bought my first guitar. I started singing, I started writing. Suddenly, I had become a singer-songwriter. Simple as that, buy a guitar, write, and sing. And through the years, I discovered two ways of songwriting. The first is the one that it never seems, that it really seems hard work writing the song. The melody and words never seem to fit. It takes a lot of effort to make it work. I really have to roll up my sleeves. Nothing wrong with hard, with hard work, but there are also times the song comes so fast that I have trouble catching up, writing down the words, figuring out the chords just before the moment is gone. I've written songs that last only for three minutes, and it took me the same amount of time to write it down. Like the song had already been with me forever, waiting to be heard, to be written, and to be sung. So, what makes it that sometimes songwriting seems hard work and a pain in the ass, and sometimes seems the easiest thing to do? For me, it's all about being inspired. I think when we are inspired, we get the best out of ourselves. We are the best versions of ourselves. And I found out for myself to be in that inspired state of mind, I have to stop thinking, be open, vulnerable, and at the same time, self-confident, determined. Like I can cry my eyes out here in front of you, not caring about whatever you may think of me. Not that I'm ignorant or indifferent, but I feel secure just the way I am. To stop thinking is hard for me. I'm not that kind of singer-songwriter that has written songs worth a million of euros. Well, actually, I think I have written those songs, but <laughs> nobody has ever paid me the millions. <laughs> so I work as a business consultant. I'm giving companies advice about strategy and internal organization. So people pay me for my thinking. Well, at least I think they do. So, stop thinking isn't easy for me. And over the years, I discovered some ways to get beyond thinking, such as running in nature. It clears my head and gets me into the flow. Sleeping and let the unconscious do the work at night. Drinking. Heavy life events, such as the birth of my two kids. Listening to my favorite music that already made it to my heart and soul. Talented athletes. Artists, musicians, raising the bars. Have I mentioned drinking? <laughs> Fifteen years ago, I stopped thinking. Sitting on the couch, watching a television program in which elderly people were asked about their quality of life. All of them were single, widows or widowers, for 10 or 20 years or so. And all of them said, well, life is not too bad. But the day he or she passed away, well, my life will never be as good as it was when we were together. They miss their soulmates so much without being downhearted or being harsh. So I stopped thinking. I was very vulnerable at the time. My dad has just died of a heart attack. And I felt strong. Committed to my father to make the very, very, very best version of myself. And then I wrote this song. And before I start playing, I want you to go back to that moment you heard your song that made it straight to your heart. 
and be inspired. This song is called To Lose the Love of Your Life. the best. 